the outset, I would like to thank Dr. P. V. Kanur, President, LIS Academy, Bangalore, for giving me this opportunity to address the August gathering at the third LIS Academic National Virtual Conference on Reinventing Excellence in Librarianship. Uh, I'm thankful to Dr. Sri Kumar for the conference director for this virtual meeting. I'm to chair the session theme four on data metrics and ranking role of librarians. The speaker in this conference in this particular theme would be Dr. S.M. Shafi, former professor and head, Department of Library and Information Science, the University of Kashmir. He'll be speaking on research data management, education and training perspectives. Dr. B.T. Thampath Kumar, professor, Department of Library and Information Science, Tumkur University, would be speaking on academic productivity at H index of faculty members as reflected in Scopus database. The third speaker would be Dr. Sanjay Kataria from Bennett University, Greater Noida. He'll be speak on, speaking on managing research data using open data repository. Dr. T.K. Girish Kumar, Assistant Professor, Department of Library Science, Banaras Sindhu University, will be talking on role of libraries in enhancing the research. Dr. Vibhuti Sahu, Deputy Librarian, Indian Institute of Technology, Bhubaneswar, will be giving a talk on role of library professionals in managing data repositories. Finally, Dr. Usha Munshi, Chief Librarian, India International Center, will be giving a talk on building bridges and open channels for a world of open data. How can library ecosystem respond? So these will be six presentation during theme four. I'll be making a presentation of ranking institutions of higher education, performance parameter, and role of librarians. Topic of my presentation is ranking institutions of higher education, performance parameter, and role of librarians. I would start with a quote by Albert Einstein, who said, not everything that counts can be measured, and not everything that counts can be measured. To start with, rank or positions are assigned to individuals or institutions based on their performance on a number of objective criteria. A ranking is a relationship between a set of items such that for any two items, the first is either ranked higher than or ranked lower than or ranked equal to the second. We are all accustomed to ranking in academic work. Students are assigned ranks based on their performance in examination. Teaching facility, faculty is selected based on their performance in academic. And moreover, promotions are awarded to faculty based on their research and teaching performance. As librarians, we are aware that journals are ranked according to their impact factor. And even publishers are ranked based on the impression by scholarly community or on analysis of the prizes received by their academies, disciplines, or publishers' reputation. And of course, impact factor journals. There are publishers' ranking called Sense Ranking, APS, and APSA ranking. So coming to the historical background, the very first attempt towards ranking of academic institutions can be traced back to 1870s, when the commission of US Bureau of Education began publishing an annual report of statistical data and classified university based on this data. It is commonly believed that ranking gained mass appeal in 1983 when US News published first ranking of undergraduate academic institutions based on survey of university presidents. In 1987, the US News adopted a multi-dimensional methodology with identification of multiple number of objective parameters. The first international meeting of ranking system was held in June 2010 in Warsaw, wherein the necessity of designing conceptual framework and transparent methodology of ranking was discussed. International Ranking Expert Group was set up in 2004, which was transformed into IREG Observatory in 2009. The two most significant rankings came soon after in 2003 and 2004. The Academic Ranking of World University or Shanghai Ranking in 2003 followed by Times Higher Education, QS ranking in 2004. A set of principles of quality and good practices in higher education institutions ranking, called the Berlin Principle on Ranking of HIE, were defined during the second meeting of IRAC 2006 in Berlin, 
these principles define a framework for elaboration and dissemination of ranking, whether they are national, regional, global, in scope, and provide for continuous improvement in refining the ranking methodology. The ranking tables are also called league tables because of Ivy League in USA, which is typically used to refer to eight universities that are alike universities and that are commonly known for their academic excellence, selectivity in admissions, higher social status, and its members are Brown University, Columbia University, Cornell University, Dartmouth College, Harvard University, University of Pennsylvania, Princeton University, and Yale University. Continuing with the background, why rank universities are ranked? Let's look into why are the universities are ranked. They are ranked to serve as a guide to students for selection of university based on a set of criteria to help universities to improve their research performance and quality based on major criteria used in ranking to help the university to identify areas of improvement and to become better at educating students and conducting research. To help industry and employees to target specific students, programs, and projects for hiring and research purposes. To provide a stable formula and a framework for ranking, evaluation, and assessment of universities, and to compete with other universities and achieve higher ranks in national and global rankings. So now let's look at major global initiatives in ranking of institutions of higher education. In this slide, I'm mentioning seven major initiatives. The first three are most important. We'll be paying emphasis on that. And four are basically based on bibliometric and uh, citation parameters. The first is ARWU or Shanghai Jiotong University of Academic Ranking of World Universities. Second is QS World University Ranking. And third is THE Times Higher Education Ranking. Now, like I mentioned, these three rankings are most important and in fact followed worldwide by various countries. The, the other four are basically bibliometric based ranking. Sinego Institution Ranking, sir. Webometric, World University Ranking on Web, Leiden Ranking, and NTU World Ranking of University. These four universities' uh, rankings are based on citations and publication, basically bibliometric parameters. Now let's look at academic ranking of World University, ARWU, or Shanghai Ranking, which ranks about 1,000 top universities. ARWU also knows that Shanghai Ranking is one of the annual publication of World University Ranking. The league table was originally compiled and issued by Shanghai Jiotong University in 2003, making it the first global university ranking with multiferous indication. AIW is often lauded for its objectivity, stability, transparency of its methodology. AIW is often criticized for size-dependent parameters that benefit larger institutions, biased towards science and technology, and larger weightage to publication and citations. It's about more than 70% is on citations and publication. It is said that AIW represents interest of China as a buyer of education because China exports many multiple number of students for higher education and thus provides an accurate picture of quality of education. Their current publications and products include global overranked ranking, global ranking of individual subjects, greater China rankings, Chinese universities ranking, and Chinese medical university ranking, and finally, Macedonian higher education institutions ranking. Now, in the next slide, I'm showing the weightage given to various parameters by Shanghai University ranking or academic ranking of World University. The 10% goes to aluminum winning Nobel Prizes, which include fellows of national academies, awards, and national awards. 20% goes to staff winning Nobel Prizes, which includes again fellowships, academies, awards. So 30% goes for the Nobel Prize itself. 20% goes to research impact, where highly cited publication in 21 broad subject categories of Web of Science is considered. 10% for per capita academic performance. 20% for papers indexed in SCI, Social Science Citation Index and Social Science Index. And 20% to papers published in Nature and Science. So this is precisely uh, the distribution. Here, 70% of the uh, weightage is given to research articles and citations, and there is zero for repetition survey or for perception. 
like I mentioned, there is 30% weightage to the Nobel Prize. In 2003, Shanghai Ranking, Free University of Berlin got the credit for Nobel Prize given to Albert Einstein, and they secure a good rank. In 2000, Shanghai Ranking, Humboldt University, Berlin, was given the credit for Nobel Prize because they claimed that the work of uh, the Einstein, uh, you know, worked uh, for Nobel Prize when he was in their university. So this was given to credit was given to Humboldt University. The Free University ranking dropped by 100 position in 2004, whereas Humboldt University gained uh, in a higher ranking. In 2004, both Humboldt University and Free University were dropped because of unresolved issue about this Nobel Prize between the two universities. It is also said that Nobel Prize does not necessarily reflect teaching excellence. Now let's see how did India perform in AIWU, number of Indian universities covered in AIWU from 2010-2019. So it increased from 2 in 2010 to 16 in 2019. Of course, number of institutions that they rank are also increasing every year that as shown in this particular table. Now let's look at Times Higher Education University ranking. They rank about 1,000 top universities. Times Higher Education University ranking is an annual exercise by Times Higher Education Supplement. The publisher collaborated with QS to publish joint PhD QS World Ranking from 2004 to 2009. From 2010 onwards, PhD signed up with Thomson Reuters for a new ranking system from 2010 to 2013. From 2014 onwards, PhD signed up with Elsevier, which provides them data from Scopus to compile the rank. PhD is often criticized for undermining non-science and non-English instructing in institutions, relying heavily on subjective repetition survey, bias towards institutions, in Europe and in America. PhD is designed in UK where the emphasis is to attract students to universities in the Western world. As such, PhD targets university and economy of countries in Western world. Their current publications and products include world overall ranking, global subject ranking, reputation ranking, regional league tables for Asia, Latin America and BRICS and ranking of institutions in emerging economies of the world. Now, if you look at the weightage given to various parameters by Times Higher Education University ranking, one can see that bias towards attracting students to the university. 2.5% goes to international diversity amongst students, 2.5% to international diversity amongst faculty, 2.5% to scholarly papers with at least one international author, and 30% for citation or research entry. Basically, citation impact, average citation per paper, and 2.5% to industry income. 30% goes to teaching learning environment, and 30% to research volumes, income, and reputation. One can see that reputation is there for teaching learning environment as well as for reputation for survey for research. So 34.5% goes for reputation, and 37% goes for research articles and citation. Now, if you look at number of Indian institutions that are listed in Times Higher Education, uh, from uh, it is from 200 to 1400 uh, institutions that are ranked. In 2010, there was a, not a single institution that were ranked in PHE. The first time they ranked in 2012, Indian Institute of Science, when they ranked about 402 institutions. And in 2020 edition of PHE, 56 institutions from Indian institutions are covered in PhD. You look at the QS World University and the parameter assigned for them. Like I mentioned, they separated uh, in 2009 from PhD and had their own ranking system. They rank about 800 top universities. You can see that 40% goes for academic reputation survey and 10% for employee reputation survey. So reputation survey itself takes about 50%. Student faculty ratio 20%, 5% to international staff ratio, 5% to international student ratio, and 20% to citations per faculty. Very simple formula, but a lot of weightage to public perception, and only 20% goes for research public, and remaining 30% for other things. How has India performed in QS ranking? In 2010, there were 11 institutions that were ranked among 700 institutions. 
and now india has 24 entries in qs in 2020 when they ranked about 100,000 institutes so this was broadly speaking uh, international scenario of ranking and how india has performed in that so look at the limitation of world university ranking and they say that the international ranking cannot reflect the true state of affairs of national education system because india itself has a 900 likewise every country has multiple universities and there are about approximately 18000 universities world over most of the rankings consider only 1000 or 1200 top university several well known indian university do not even qualify in the preliminary round of measurement some of the indicators used in the world ranking are not even remotely applicable to indian universities for example nobel prize winners among selling in indian faculty article published in nature and science international faculty in fact indian institutions cannot deploy uh, international faculty by default this is the uh, government as in permit that the nobel prizes and field medals they were extremely outstanding achievements in traditional academic disciplines like chemistry physics biology medicine and economics and it under represents highly diverse expanding and wider range of scholarly achievement world ranking puts greater emphasis on research over teaching none of the ranking considers factors like social responsibility of universities or students and alumni opinion reputation or perception based evaluation used by qs and qc can be highly subjective and biased towards famous university in western world or universities in reviewers home country if you look at the indian scenario the rankings were being published by magazines and newspapers such as times of india hindustan times hindu magazines like youth incorporated india today business today outlook mint data quest and of course there are sites like career 360 which which publish mba colleges in the end in india top engineering college top medical colleges top law colleges the first true efforts towards ranking was done by infinet in 2013 when we brought out ranking of indian universities using bibliographic parameters and of course in 2015 nirf national institution ranking framework was launched where infinet participates in a big way so coming to india ranking of indian university by infinet we used a rank university using two formula one is called iugr formula that was developed by a spanish group and national taiwan university formula which of course ranked uh, world university if you look at the iugr ranking formula it has two distinct uh, indicators one is quantitative indicators another is qualitative indicators so quantitative indicators include number of publication number of citation and action data so quantitative indicator qnr is drawn by making a square cube of product of all these three products now qualitative indicators has three components ratio of papers published in journals in the top dcr quartile average size number of citation received by all papers and ratio of papers belonging to the top 10 most cited papers calculated with the knowledge the qlif is product of these three qualitative parameters the iugr formula is a product of qnif and qlif based on this formula we rank the university then we also used ntu ranking formula which consists of three broader parameters research productivity research impact and research excellence research product includes two parameters number of articles in last 11 years and number of articles in the current year it is a weightage of 10 and 15 percent research impact has three components number of citations in last 11 years number of citation in last two years and average number of citation in last 11 years so 35 percent weightage to this and finally research excellence which consists of three parameters h index for the last two years number of highly cited papers in 11 years a number of articles in current year in top 5% high sector to put together these three parameters define and to be ranked so we use both these parameters and rank university the used web of science 793 university that existed in 2003 were considered we took out 160 university 
that had, had at least 265 articles and university that had less than 265 articles were not considered a rank. So 793 universities, 361,998 papers, 16,17,996 citations and the year covered was from 2008 to 2013. This is the website of uh, Indian University ranking. It is still available. If you like, you can visit this site. Now, we calculated the correlation between the IUGR ranking and interview ranking, which is very high, 0.94%. I'll not talk about more in detail. You can go to the website and find out how universities perform into Indian University ranking system. Now, coming to National Institute Ranking Framework, which is, of course, now prevalent, started in 2016 and continuing in 2020, we have in June 11, we have uh, announced the result for NIRS India ranking. So, India ranking, as you know, uh, the framework was defined by, NES, by the Ministry of Human Resource Development, Government of India. It was launched by Honorable Minister of Human Resource Development on 29 September 2015. And soon in 2016, we came up with the first ranking of Indian University. The parameter broadly covered in the framework is teaching, learning, and resources, research and professional practices, graduation outcome, outreach and inclusivity, and perception. The weightage assigned, there are, as you know, more than 10 categories. The weightage assigned to each category is 0 0.30 for teaching, learning, and resources, 0 0.20 for graduation outcome, and 0 0.10 for perception, 0 0.30 for research and professional practices, and 0 0.10 for outreach and inclusivity. Now, within each broad parameter, there are sub parameters. I would rather not go for these things. These details are available on NIRF website, but there are different weightage assigned to each of these sub parameters, which you can find on the NIRF website. I would not uh, elaborate on it now. I would now just like to talk on looking beyond ranking some interesting insights from India ranking 2017 to 2020. Let's look at faculty with PhD versus faculty with master in engineering institutions. In engineering institutions, 36.12% faculty have master's uh, PhD, whereas 63.88% has only a master's degree. Now, if you look at the experience, faculty with eight years of experience is 41.27%. Faculty with 8 to 15 years of experience is 30.92% and faculty with more than 15 years of experience is 27.82%. Young versus experienced faculty. The institutions, there are about 1,007 institutions who applied in engineering category. So institutions having 15% faculty with experience up to 8 years is 37.74%. Institutions having 50% faculty with more than 15 years of experience is only 8.4%, and remaining, which is a mix of 8 years experience or less than that and more than 15 years experience, is about 544, that is 54.12%. So one can say there is a good mix of faculty uh, with experience available in these institutions. Now, what is interesting to note is that uh, now that we are ranking from 2017 onwards, the trend is the faculty with PhD is increased from 28% in 2017 to 36% in 2020. Whereas faculty without PhD has decreased from 72% in 2017 to 64% in 2020. This is another perspective to look at faculty with eight years, eight to 15 years, and more than 15 years experience. You can see that faculty with uh, less than eight years, eight years experience had decreased from 54.15% to 41.27%, whereas there is an increase in faculty with more than 15 years experience from 21.27% to 27.82%, and 24.56% to 30.90%. So this is a distinct increase in experience faculty uh, in all the institutions over the year from 2017 to 2020. This is young versus uh, experienced faculty. 
you can see that institution with 50% yield per faculty has decreased from 76% to 38%, whereas institution with experienced faculty has increased from 20% to 38% and from 2% to 23% in case of uh, you know more than 15 years of experience. Now, this is the slide which shows faculty student ratio in applicant engineering institution. As you know, the ideal FSR faculty student ratio is 20. So every class, every section should have about 20 students per class. Now, if you look at this figure, it shows that there is a tendency to increase number of faculty over the year. You can see that uh, FSR is increasing. You can see from 354 to 551 over the year. Green is uh, line is uh, 2020. So from 357 to 517 and from 274 to 341. So there is a distinct increase in the FSR in the institution, whereas of course there are institutions with 31 to 40 FSR, 41 to 50 FSR, and of course there are three to four institutions that qualify for one to 10 FSR also. But the good news is that FSR is increasing in most of the institution, which applies that, uh, you know, they're trying to qualify for accreditation as well as for ranking. Now, coming to median utilization financial resources, you can see that uh, the maximum, there's an increase in financial resources that are being uh, spent on the student. It is maximum 81,603 in case of management, but one can see that the increase in almost every category over the year. The figure also shows that in all categories, the fund utilization or financial resource utilization is increasing in all categories over the year from 2017 to 2020. This is a very interesting slide which shows that the contribution of first 100, top 100 universities or institutions ranked in various domain is about 70 to 80 percent. You can see the figure uh, column six. Whereas remaining institutions contribute only remaining 30% or less than. In, in fact, in management, it is 90% is by 100 institutions and remaining 10 or 11% only by remaining institutions. So likewise, one can see that university 77.8% is contributed by top 100, whereas 22.12 by remaining more than 173 universities. Likewise, you can see this, uh, this graph which shows how it is varying. Of course, most of the time it is 70%, 70 to 80% by 100 university and remaining less than 30 by remaining institutions. Of course, college is an exception. Now, if you see the trend over the year, how it has grown, you can see that institutions, top 100 contribution by top 100 institution has decreased over the year from 2017 to 2020. There's a decrease. Contribution for remaining institutions have increased, which means that these institutions are making extra effort to publish in good journals and trying to hike up their rank. This slide shows the highly cited publication and how they contribute in first 100 and remaining institutions. You can see the same. Rather, here it is, in fact, in most of the cases, more than 80%. Uh, in fact, in pharmacy, it is 91.7% and in management, it is 92.64%. So, number of publication by first hundred distributions or rather number of highly cited publication is much more by first hundred than remaining. Years. The same trend you can see in this graph and over the year, this trend again has registered a similar decline by first hundred universities. You can see and by remaining institution, there is an increase in HCP. So what we see in the publication is true in HCP also. Now this slide shows research publication of NIR eligible institution in comparison to total research publication of the world and India. You can see that in India overall category 4.33% of the world is contributed by India, whereas 70% of it is contributed by IR eligible institutions. In engineering, the contribution of India 
to the world publication is 6.62 percent, and 83.44 percent are from institutions that have applied for India ranking. Same thing you can see in the management and pharmacy also. This is chart which shows uh, World India and RSLI application and how they contribute and what are the trend over the year. You can see the table and you can see in the graph that over the year the contributions of eligible institution in comparison to total research publication of India has increased in case of engineering from 67.84% to 83.44% and likewise there is an increase in all categories and that are plotted here, five of them. Of course, college we haven't plotted because it doesn't show any trend. Surprisingly, there are a number of applicant institutions that have zero publication, including one university. And of course, in management, there are 364 management institutions who have zero publication and 329 colleges that have zero publication. So there are a lot of institutions having zero publication, but over the year, even the percentage of zero publication has also decreased in all cases, including management, engineering, university. University, of course, there's only one university, but in the first year, there were seven universities which had zero publication. If you look at the share of publication from top 100 highly productive engineering institutions, you can see that, uh, of course, IITs contribute the lion's share, 37%, followed by deemed university, 21%, followed by NIT 18% and by another institution. If you compare share of India's total publication versus NIRF, NIRF applicants in engineering, you can see that 83.44% is from NIRF eligible institutions and 16% by other institutions who are not applicants to NIRF, which may include CSIR lab, which may include and DAE labs or ISRO and other institutions who publish in Indian air. You can also see cumulative increase in number of publication of NIR eligible applicants from 2016 to 2020. The increase in continuous, you can see that uh, the increase is phenomenal in all categories from 2016 to 2020. Same is true in management pharmacy and colleges. Uh, this is comparative, comparative research publication of word in the INNR. Over the year, you can see there is an increase in almost all categories. The increase in plotted percentage-wise, you can see that uh, uh, where NIRF eligible institution, the increase has registered 67 from 91, 67.91 in 2017 to 70.60 in 2020, whereas other institutions have registered decrease from 32.09% to 29.40%. This is an overall category. This is sponsored research funding. You can see that sponsored research funding has consistently decreased in all the three categories shown here, which shows there is a uh, there is an opportunity for government of India to fund more research. And of course, National Research Foundation has come up now, which will be funding institutions in a better way. This is a correlation between rank by research performance. And all parameters. If they rank institutions using all the five parameters, and if you rank them only on research performance, there is a very good correlation coefficient in case of engineering, management, all except for of course uh, colleges it is low, but otherwise, if you rank just by research publication, you get the indicator that how they well they are going to perform on other parameters. This is rank correlation uh, parameters on uh, various ranking intervals. As you can see, they are very good and uh, in fact, excellent in some of the cases. So the correlation coefficient is good over the year. This slide shows regional, uh, region-wise distribution of rank distribution in IR2020. You can see that South represents the most. 41% comes from the South, followed by 21% from North, and 16 and 19 percent in West and East. So if you look at the real role of librarian, all jobs involved publication, citation, analysis, presentation is done by staff at instrument with qualification in librarian information science. Librarian should take up a responsibility for coordinating activities related to ranking, evaluation, and assessment 
they should impart information literacy program on impact factor h index i10 index high impact journals predatory journals predatory conferences etc they should master the art of searching citation databases taken databases plagiarism detection and related resources they should organize workshops seminars and webinars to educate their students and faculty in technical writing and i would like to refer to ocr's perception for the library here which uh, it states that wherever they have librarians contributions in terms of institution repository those institutions have done very well in, in evaluation assessment and in the ranking so this was ocr's perception about the library so with that i'll end my presentation thanks for patience listening bye thank you